What's going on, y'all? What's up, world? Yeah, so I'm sorry I'm a little late. I know I was telling y'all I was going to be on here at 8, but um, hey, got to be an adult. You know how it go. <laughs> so, okay. First lady in the building. First lady in the building. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Fiance on deck. Fiance on deck for sure. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna just give it a few more minutes. Let a couple more people join. <laughs> What's that for? What's that for? <laughs> Y'all, this is my first time going live. I don't know what's going on, so y'all bear with me. Okay, bet. Bet. B. Wells, what up, bro? What up, Pops? <laughs> what up, Pops? Yeah. Y'all, this is my first time on live. Can y'all hear me good? Yo, Facebook said, congratulations. This is your most commented on live video yet. Duh. I ain't never been on here, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So I got to invite you? So I gotta invite people. <laughs> Y'all help help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, okay. Okay, bet. Bet, bet, bet. Oh, that's what you was talking about. Yeah, 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 fam. You good. You know you coming to the wedding. That's all great. So don't invite people to the broadcast as a guest. Help me, Holy Ghost. Okay. So, can I uninvite y'all? That's kind of savage. All right. Okay. Okay, bet, bet, bet. So, y'all bear with me, man. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes. Okay, I won't, bro. I won't, bro. Hold on. So, y'all might have to uninvite, unguess y'all selves. Hey, Auntie Phil, how you doing? Yo, this Facebook Live kind of dope. It's kind of straight. <laughs> so, so yeah, just a few more minutes, y'all. It's 820. Sorry again, I'm running late. Um, but me and the lady was out taking care of some things. So, I don't know how it go. Hey, Auntie Phil, what's up? How you doing? Thank you for logging on. Thank you for logging on. So yeah, y'all, just a little overview. Um, I, I just really want to share my testimony. Um, I'm just coming off of a fast and consecration. And um, for those that don't know, consecration is, it's, um, it's actually like a lifestyle. It's like you're fasting. Um, but you're really like setting yourself apart. So when you're in consecration, it's, it's just more like you're really ducked off. Like you're, you know, you may not be on the phone as much. You may not be on social media as much. It's just you and the Lord. You just really seeking God and, and everything that he's doing in that season. And even though like it's consecration as in fasting, consecration is a lifestyle. You know, you, you live a ducked off lifestyle where, you know, in season and out of season, whether it's good or whether it's bad, like you always seeking the Lord. So yeah, I'm just coming off of a consecration and, um, you know, I, I was able to get a lot of things from the Lord. And one of the things that God really was on me about is really like speaking, like really sharing my life and, and sharing my testimony and sharing my faith with others. Cause I've done it through my music, you know, um, my last project, um, praise my testimony that was really me just giving um just really just giving people um 
my faith through music. Uh, praise my testimony. Um, Y'all can check it out. It's it's on my website, rapperbaronandsmith.com. But it was really just me sharing um, my pathway to God, like how I found the Lord and, um, you know, where God was taking me in my life, you know, and is it still to this day shocks me because I never thought that God would use me in my music. I never thought God would use me in my life. I never thought that, um, you know, I would do anything from God. I was an unlikely candidate. Um, to serve God because I've, I've always went my own way. I've always done my own thing. You know, like, like every other kid, you know, in, in, you know, down south, you know, you, you go to church with mom and them and grandma and them, but it's like you just going to church. It don't really mean nothing to you. It didn't really mean much to me. You know, I used to just go to church and, you know, I used to just draw and, you know, flirt with girls and stuff. I, I just didn't take it seriously. I used to always question God you know, does God exist? Where is he? You know, I used to always have so many questions and nobody could answer my questions. So over time, I disengaged from uh, things of God and I went my own way for a long time. I've always been super mega talented with uh, with music. I've always been rapping. I started rapping in third grade, just freestyling. So, you know, music has always been a part of my life. You can ask anybody, family, friends, um, you know, even people that never met me a day in my life, music has always, what's up, Erica? How you doing, sis? What's up, Sandra? How you doing, Cuzzo? So it's, it's like music always been a part of my life. And, um, you know, it was just my lifestyle. And, you know, I really began to, um, you know, go into music. But again, it wasn't for God. It was just strictly for me. I was in it for the money. I was in it for the fame. You know, I was, you know, I had situations where, you know, people was like trying to get me to sell my soul to the devil. And I said, nah. And, you know, ever since then, God has really pursued me. Um, so again, I'm an unlikely candidate. I just want to make that clear. Um, you know, I know a lot of people say that some people are holier than thou and, you know, they found God and they're weird now, man, I'm just as, you know, transparent as I always been, but I do not deny my faith because what God did with me was very personal. It was very special and it had to be something real for me to get off that path to come to this path. It was something true and something real because y'all know me. Y'all know me, man. Like, you know, everybody on my timeline ain't saved. Y'all know me and I know y'all. And Again, I'm just an unlikely candidate. I'm, I'm one of the last persons that people would think because I don't have no religion on me. I, I didn't take church seriously, so I wasn't indoctrinated in religion. Um, you know, I, I'm an unlikely candidate. But, you know, God says that I use the foolish things of the word to confound the wise. You know, I, I'm not always going to come in a suit. I'm not always going to come the say of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Man of God. I, I, I'm not always going to come at you like that. That's just not how I roll. That's not how God made me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thankful that God has, has kept me. Um, he's, he's always preserved me where I could still be myself, where I could still love on people, where I could still communicate with atheists, with Muslims, with, you know, people from different backgrounds and cultures um, that, you know, never set foot in the church, will never even go to a church, or maybe they've been to a church before and they'll, they'll never go again, but they will listen to what I have to say. So I just thank God for just keeping me. I thank him for putting me on this path. Um, and I'm just going to just gonna pray really quick. Um, so Father God, I pray that this would be all of you and none of me. God, I pray that I will de decrease so you will increase. I pray that your Holy Spirit will flow. God, if, if, just let this be what you want this to be, God. There is no agenda. I have nothing written down. This is no plan. I just want the Holy Ghost to speak through me to your people. I want to share my testimony and honesty, truth, love, and grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank everybody for being on this line. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. All eight viewers. You know, eight is, is um the number of new beginnings. So today is a new beginning. Hello, um, Miss Kimberly. How you doing? How you doing? Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless everybody. Bless all y'all. For sure. For sure. What's up, Cuzzo? What's up, Didi? What's up, Cuzzo? So, so yeah, just want to get into it, y'all. Again, I'm, I'm fresh off consecration, and um, I just really want to share with y'all my testimony. So, um, for those that know me, um, thanks, Pops. Those that know me um, know I was living in Atlanta for five years, and um, 
And with with that time of me being there, um, my time pretty much ran out. Um, I I did get saved there. I did get baptized. I, I did fellowship. I did worship there. But you know, my season really ran up, and um, and I was really seeking God. Um, I had a job, and I left my job. So I was really seeking the Lord, like, you know, God, what's next? You know, you called me to leave this job. I'm making more money than I ever made in my life. What, you know, what's next? So the first thing I did when I left my job, I went on a fast and consecration. Um, I actually went to a spiritual retreat in um, the North Georgia mountains, about an hour away from Atlanta. And um, I was just really just seeking God. And God took me to the book of Deuteronomy. And he was talking about Abraham and the promised land and, and, you know, just just going somewhere that you've never been before. So, you know, um, God didn't give me a whole lot about it, but I just kept it in my spirit that, okay, God, you're going to send me somewhere else. So so just going forward, again, I was just serving God. Um, I was doing uh, youth Bible study. Um, I was doing uh, music worship, youth conferences, um, you know, just doing street ministry. Um, you know, everything that God called me to do in that season, I was faithful and obe uh, obedient to it. So um, lo and behold, it was around September. Um, one of my sisters in Christ, Ashley, she had a prayer call, and um, it was for the September shift. And every day, we, it was a, a month-long prayer call. Like every day, we would pray for um, different, different topics. Like Monday, we would pray for those in prison. Tuesday, we would pray for the for, you know, little kids and, and, uh, and the school system. So it's like I was on that prayer call, and one of the prayer leaders is now my fiancé. And, you know, I really uh, connected with her. Like, she just got on there and started praying. And I'm like, God, who is this? Like, man, she got that fire. So, you know, we connected. And, you know, we really stayed in, in real close uh, fellowship. It turned to a friendship. Then it turned to a relationship. And she was in the state of Michigan. She was in Detroit. So, you know, lo and behold, in this time, you know, um, God is drying things up in Atlanta. I mean, it's getting dry, bro. Like, I ain't, I mean... I think when God is ready for us to move, two things that he'll remove is uh, resources and relationships. Um, I was attending a church in Atlanta. Um, I really outgrew the church. Um, and my resources were drying up, too, because, again, again, I was out of work. I, I wasn't working from August, um, August of last year. You know, I, I, I was not working. I was just serving God and serving, serving the ministry that he gave me. So, I mean, I'm on a total leap of faith, but, you know, I'm still... And in a sense, I was scared. I didn't know. Um, I never trusted God that deeply before, you know, especially with my finances and especially, you know, me just being a man in this world. You know, there's not a there's not a lot of um, restoration for men who don't have a job at that time. So um, I, I really just had to trust God. And um, I, I kind of went in a panic mode because my finances were really dwindling. And, you know, donations weren't coming as quickly as I needed. You know, I, you know, people wasn't, you know, um, you know, sewing into my ministry as fast as they could. Like they were, but it wasn't enough to sustain myself. And, you know, I, I had roommates and I had to pay rent. And it, it was just a lot. It was just a whole lot. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, bro? It was just a lot. So so over time um, in that in that fear and in that panic mode, I started putting in applications in Atlanta. And I went on job interview after job interview after job interview, and I I couldn't get a job. Like, and I just graduated from college, and I'm like, bro, how I got a degree and I can't get a job? Like, this is just so crazy, right? So, um, you know, in between that time, um, me and me and my, you know, now fiance, you know, we were really, you know, building our relationship and and staying in constant fellowship, and. I was like, man, you know, what if I put on some applications up there? I wonder what'll happen. So I put in some applications up here in the Detroit area, and I'm getting like, I'm getting it like back to back to back, man. I'm getting hit after hit. And I'm like, man, this might have to be the move because everything drying up out here is, is like, God, if I don't move, God, you moving me. <laughs> like, it's clear. So I went on an interview. And it was for a bank and, um, you know, everything was looking good. They said, hey, you know, we want you to come on as an assistant uh, branch manager. We're going to pay you X, Y, Z. Come on through. So, you know, I'm in faith. I jump in the car, get on 75, headed north, a 10 hour drive. I was up in Michigan in two days. So I come down here. Right. 
and they give the job to somebody else. Ain't that something? So they get the job to somebody else, and I'm like, man, God, what am I going to do? And by this time, again, my resources are still dwindling. You know, donations is coming in. Like, like I mean, as soon as I get something, it's got to go to bills, or I got to get food or get gas. And, I mean, it's getting real in my finances. And I've never, I've never struggled like that in a long time. So I was like, man, it's getting real out here. So lo and behold, I'm, I'm up in Michigan. It's snowing. It's cold. I ain't never experienced nothing like that. I'm from the South. So I'm just like, God, what, what is going on? I'm, I'm literally living in a hotel. What's up, bud? What's up, bro? I'm literally living in a hotel at this time. You know, like the job situation didn't pan out. You know, what's up, cuzzo? How you doing? Like the, the job did, didn't pan out. And I'm just like really stressing. I'm really struggling, you know. Um, and I'm just like, God, I thought you said you wanted me to have this job and now I don't have this job no more. Like God, you told me I was going, what's up, bro. You told me I was going somewhere and I went here and now everything is not working. God, you showed me the book of Deuteronomy. You know, you said Abraham, um, you told Abraham to go to the land that I'm showing you no roadmap, no nothing. I said, God, I'm, I'm showing the faith of Abraham right now. And I'm, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I did everything you asked me to do. I've been faithful. I'm not perfect, but I've been faithful, God. What's going on? So lo and behold, it's my birthday. Um, my birthday comes up and on my birthday, I get a phone call from another bank, another job. And they said, hey, we got your application. We want, you know, we want you to come in for an interview. And I said, wow, God, what a what a what a beautiful birthday present for your boy. So, and on that same day, um, actually me and my now fiance, we was out on a date and we actually got a prophetic word from a homeless man. And I mean, he was just speaking. I mean, he, this man, y'all, this man prophesied to the point where I couldn't even move. I couldn't even talk to this man because his word was so on point and he just, he just solidified that the woman that is now my fiance is for sure to be my wife because everything he spoke about is true and it's coming to pass even now, man. So again, I thank God for his obedience, man. And I pray that God continue to cover him for the word that he gave us on that night. And, um, you know, we didn't even tell him our names. We didn't get his name. It just, he was just there on assignment. It, it was a beautiful thing. So that was my birthday present, you know, from God, the job and confirmation about my wife. What a birthday. So, and um, again, just shout out to everybody on the line, man. Thank y'all for the hearts. Thank y'all for the likes and for the love. Thank y'all for checking in, man. Bless y'all. So, you know, all right. So a couple weeks later, um, I did take up a temporary job. Um, I was working at a, um, at a department store, you know, um, nighttime stocking just until I did get the job with, uh, with the bank. And um, I'm now with Bank of America. I'm a personal banker. Woo -woo. And um, it actually is more money. It's more money than the job that um, cut me off. More bread. Ain't God good, man. 15000 more dollars. Ain't God good. So, so, yeah, lo and behold, I'm doing, hey, what's up, Tina? How you doing? So I'm doing, you know, the, the part-time job. I'm being obedient to it. And, you know, I'm, I'm just grinding. I'm really on my grind because it's third shift. I ain't worked third shift in, in like 10 years. And it was a humbling process because I wasn't making the kind of money that I need to make. But God, God came through in that season. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was provision, you know, to get, to get me to that next step. So I had to humble myself, you know what I'm saying? But even then, God was still using me. He was still using me. And I was thankful. So um, I did uh, start the new job in April. And before that, I closed on my apartment um, right before I started my job. And, and God was so good. My best friend, Chappelle, he got married in April. And God even made a way where, you know, me and my fiance was able to attend the wedding. You know, and again, it's, it was tight for a long time. And God made a way, you know, for me to attend my best friend wedding and, and be the best man and, and love on my family and see my family again. So that was a blessing. So... With me locking down my apartment, because, um, again, I was still living in a hotel. I was staying in a hotel from January until April. You know what I'm saying? So um, 
with with the uh, apartment. What's up, Cuzzo? How you doing? So with the apartment, you know, I, I got the job. So I'm like, okay, I got the job now. Now I can get get a, a place to stay because that hotel is is racking up. It's like 60, 70, 80 a night. You know, I'm, I mean, credit cards to the max. God, you making a way, but it's still tight. You know what I'm saying? So, so lo and behold, I'm looking for apartments. Can't find an apartment to save my life. Everything is booked up until you know maybe like may and june i'm, I'm not finding something hey miss and that how you doing everything is just booked up so you know i went to this place like i was really just out of options i went to this place and they asked me where you know where do you work you know you get an apartment or a house or whatever they got to verify your employment or whatnot make sure you ain't you know on that dope boy and that hot boy stuff so so i went up in there and, um, you know, they asked me, where do I work? And I said, Bank of America. They said, oh, Bank of America. That's one of our preferred employees, you know, and because what up, Ike? And it was like, because you work there, we're, you know, we're going to waive move in fees. So literally my my move in deposit was 150 and prorated for that month. Ain't God good, man. Ain't God good. And the thing is, I, I was tripping because the other the other job you know, they curved me, you know what I'm saying? But lo and behold, God was already working it out because the job that I have now is more money, but it was also attached to where I live now. Hallelujah. It's, it, it was so attached. Thank you, bro. What's up, Ike? And everything was so attached. Everything was so divine. I just had to wait on the Lord, y'all. I just had to wait. So lo and behold, man, I went to my best friend's wedding. I had a good time, man. I loved on my family. They loved on me. They loved on my fiance. It was a beautiful time. And when I came back, I came back from South Carolina and I came back to my new spot, man. Y'all, I ain't had no furniture. I slept on that floor, but that was some blessed sleep, man, because I was in my own spot. No more hotels, no more struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like, no no more warfare. You know what I'm saying? I was in a safe place, and I, I prayed over this place. I anointed this place, and this is a safe place. And I said, God, this is your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, you know, we, we do fellowship over here, man. We serve people. We I love on people over here, man. God, this is your house. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is what you want to make of it, but I need your spirit to be here. I need your spirit to dwell. You know what I'm saying? So, lo and behold, I got the spot. You know, God is good. Um, matter of fact, man, I'm going I'm to show y'all a little bit, man, because God is so faithful, man. Y'all see that, man? God is so good. Hold on. Let me see if I can flip that camera. Yes, I can. woo -hoo! So, yeah, y'all, y'all see it, man. Brand new appliances. God is so faithful. I went, uh, me and my fiance, we went to Ikea, man. We got these plants up in here now, you know. That's um that's my um, monochrome paint. I paint, too, y'all. Yeah. I paint too, y'all. Got the stackable washer dryer. God is so good. I ain't never had that um in an apartment, y'all. Never had that. Um dishwasher, boom boom. Nice little chairs, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, just just a little something, something. Just a little something, something. I'm not gonna brag. But God is so good and God is so faithful. And um and I thank God for giving me the desires of my heart because where I live is it's, it's got everything I need. What's up, Jeffrey? What's up, bro? It's got everything that I need, you know, like even down to, you know, just things being like around me. Like there's a Target like five minutes down the street, Chili's, Applebee's, movie theaters. Like I'm in a safe area. I'm in a blessed area. Like um, there's a public library down the street, Starbucks. I mean, like it's I mean, it's got everything I need and more. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thankful to God that he gave me the desires of my heart. You know, even with like a place to stay, y'all. So, yeah, God is good, man. Grace and peace to you too, bro. So God is so good, man. God is so faithful. Um, and, you know, on my consecration, I'm going to the consecration now. So, um, again, I went, we, me and my fiance, we went on consecration um, in May and, you know, we got engaged. We was just, you know, in prayer one day and, you know, God said, go ahead and ask her. I asked her, I had no ring. You know what I'm saying? And she said, yes, we went down to JC, you know, we went down to JC Penney's. We got a ring, you know, and I'm getting the real thing soon. You know what I'm saying, baby? I got you. But, you know, it just, 
you know, God make a way, man. God was really making a way for me. And I'm, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful that, you know, in every area of my life that, you know, the enemy wreaked havoc or, you know, God gave him permission to wreak havoc, you know what I'm saying? Because he can only do but for what God allows him to do, you know what I'm saying? I lost a lot of things. I lost a lot of things, y'all. Um, coming to Christ, y'all, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's it's, it's going to cost you some warfare, man. It's, it's going to cost you some relationships. It's going to cost you some family members. It's going to cost you, you know, some finances. Sometimes it's going to be a little tight because God got to see, okay, how you going to do with the little bit that I give you knowing that I'm making room for more. So again, y'all, I lost a lot of things in my life. I lost my mom. I lost my grandma. Um, I've, I've had toxic relationships that I was involved in. Um, you know, I left the music industry. You know, my music was was a big part of my identity. I had no identity, but now I have identity in Christ. And, you know, I had to start over with my, with my music career. And, you know, I, I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, but God is definitely restoring that as well. But I'm doing it for his glory. And, um, you know, it just I've been through a lot of ups and downs in my life, but I can truly say I'm at a point where like life was like that. But now it's starting to even out. It's starting to coast. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just so thankful because it's all God. It's all his man. And, and I'm just here to tell anybody to tell anybody y'all trust God. It it may not always feel good. It, it may not always seem right. But y'all trust God because he knows he knows what we need and and sometimes you know we in church and, and and people say you know god is gonna bless your finances god gonna turn it around in your bank account and i mean that is true you know what i'm saying like god is 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 our provider because we call him jehovah jireh that means that god is our provider but sometimes y'all it's maybe it's peace of mind maybe it's you know my family coming back in alignment with God. Maybe it's, you know, me having a stable life at home. Like maybe it's my emotions and my insecurities just burning away by the Holy Spirit. Like maybe it's, you know, an uh, increase in the spirit. Maybe it's God giving me new abilities and gifts. Like maybe it's, you know, God showing me more of his love. Maybe it's God showing me more of his comfort and his will for my life. You know what I'm saying? And I really feel that I have those things and I've obtained those things. And I know God is going to do a lot more. He's not done with me. So I'm just so thankful. I just want to encourage everybody out there with my testimony because the word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimonies. I just want to let anybody know that's out there. And, you know, maybe God is is pushing you in a new direction. God wants to do something new with you. You know, maybe maybe God's been tugging on your heart like, man, move. Take that job that you always wanted. You know, take, do an internship. Serve at, you know, your local church. You know, get involved with your community. Start that little, little league team. You know what I'm saying? Um, go ahead and start that business that I placed on your heart. Go ahead and chase after your gifts. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that relationship that I know is for you, go ahead and pursue that. Because God has given that stamp of approval, y'all. Trust God. He won't fail you, man. Like, God makes sure that his children don't go out in shame. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the thing is, y'all, God is the God of the universe. Like, take every limitation off of God, period. And just get that in your soul, get that in your spirit, that God is the God of the universe, and get it in your heart that God, for God I live, for God I die. I'm obedient. God, if you call me to Africa, I'm going. If you call me to Japan, I'm going. South Korea, I'm going. God, if you're going to be there, I'm going. Because I know your spirit's going to be there. I know you got the provision there. I know you got the people there, the relationships there. I know you got the desires of my heart there. I know you got a purpose for me there. I know you got a mission for me there. You know what I'm saying? So, God, I'm going to go where you want me to go instead of staying stuck and stagnant. That's not living. We got to live this life, y'all. So, again, y'all, again, I'm not trying to hold up a whole lot of your time, y'all. This is my first time kicking it with y'all on Facebook Live. I look forward to kicking it with y'all a lot more, man, and just, and just sharing what God gives me, sharing my heart. And, again, y'all, I don't know what this is going to turn into. It might turn into 
um, you know, me, you know, speaking as God wants me to speak. I'm not going to put a time frame or, or anything on it. I'm going to just speak and let the Holy Ghost speak. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a willing vessel. And I always pray that when I speak that God touch my lips like he did the prophet Jeremiah. So, again, y'all, thank y'all so much for y'all just, just tuning in. Thank everybody for just giving me y'all time and, and just listening to what God is doing in my life. Again, I've been on consecration. Um, you know, I moved to a new state. I've started a new job. Um, I'm about to get married. It's a lot of, it's a lot going on in my life right now. And I know, you know, even through life and through social media, we're not always able to talk every single day, you know? So I just want to let you guys know what God is doing in my life and just share what he's done with me and, you know, what he'll continue to do. I look forward to sharing with y'all more and speaking more and, and just sharing more of my heart. So, man, bless y'all. I love y'all so much, and I look forward to talking to y'all again very soon. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Bless you. I thank y'all for just, just, just tuning in and rocking with me, and I look forward to just continuing to share my heart, man. So bless y'all. Y'all have a good night. I pray that God bless and keep you. I pray that God's angels up on you. You know what I'm saying? I pray that everything that I spoke was all of God and none of me. I pray that every desire of your heart that's in God's will come to pass. And I love y'all, and I thank y'all so much for y'all time, man. God bless y'all. One love.